I caught my wife cheating with an old boyfriend in his minivan at her class reunion. I went to my wife's class reunion and she told me she was going to go talk to a group of girls she used to hang with and left me sitting with some dudes from her school. They looked like they smoked weed all day long and out of everything they talked about, no one was talking about actually having a job or doing anything substantial with their lives. So I got up to go find her, not being able to listen to their bullshit anymore and lo and behold, she is nowhere to be found. I called her phone and didn't get an answer. I thought maybe she went to the bathroom, so again, trying to get as far away from these idiots as possible, I went and stood closer to the bathroom door. After a few minutes, I realized she wasn't in there so I went looking around the banquet center, and nope, nowhere to be found. I was like, what the actual hell, at this point. So I decided I'd go to the parking lot to look and if I didn't find her there I was just going to sit in the car. I couldn't bear the thought of listening to one more video game story, nor those one time at band camp stories that all of those idiots were bent on telling, as if they were adding any value to the world or to each other with their mundane, lame lives. So I get to the parking lot and see her, finally, getting out of the back end of a minivan. She is getting out and trying her best to fluff her hair and straighten out her clothes. I march right over there and see some dude zipping his pants up. He is sweaty and actually looks like a complete turd. I mean, this guy was not in near as good of shape as I am in, and he drives a minivan. I drive a Viper. I don't know what he's packing, but I am well above average, so I'm thinking I still outrank him there as well. I yell, what the fuck, Sarah. She gasps, and he runs and hides on the other side of his minivan. Come to find out, he was an old boyfriend of hers, like somehow that is supposed to make this better or make it to where I understand. I tell her I don't care who or what he is, I'm going to beat his ass and then you're packing your shit and getting out of my house and my life. I start looking for Mr. Fatty Pants, and he just keeps running around his van, like a child being chased around the kitchen table. I was getting so angry and yelled at him to stop running like a coward, but he persisted. I finally got him moving too fast in one direction to where he couldn't stop himself fast enough to turn around and run the other way. I guess he really gassed himself in the back of that van. Wow, that must have been a real pleasurable experience for them both. Gasping for air, muscles failing, movements short and inconsistent. Yeah, I bet that was totally worth it. I finally catch him and start to bring down the wrath of the gods on him, but he starts screaming and begging me not to hit him. I mean, he was screaming like a middle school girl who was getting her candy stolen from her. Do you know how hard it is to hit someone who is screaming like that, or who is openly begging you not to hit them? On one hand, it made me want to pummel him even more, but it also made me feel as if my obvious superiority was too much, and that I needed to be a merciful god instead of being one of wrath and judgment. So I gave him a few open hand smacks to the face, insulting him like the bitch that he was, and then I opened his minivan door and pulled out what appeared to be a two-week-old McDonald's cup of flat and decaying Coca-Cola. I popped the lid off and poured it right on top of his balding head. I then grabbed some fries off the floorboard and smeared them on his face, some of them sticking to the soda residue that remained on his cheeks. I then raised my closed fist one last time so I could get the satisfaction of hearing him scream that horrific scream, one last time. I swear, it was the same sound that the Empire must have used on the show and to torment and interrogate Bix, the junk shop owner. If I wasn't in such a rage, I too might have become totally mentally disturbed by the shriek he let out. I finally walk away and go inside to wash my hands of his stench and to find my wife, who had run away amidst the tormentous screams of her minivan lover. The band was still playing some awful rendition of what I am sure was supposed to be a well-known classic rock song. Maybe they had heard the screams too and were now too upset to play the songs right. Who am I kidding? They sucked from the very first note. I didn't even ask, but I would bet $250 on my right note that at least half of these idiots graduated from the same little school in this same scuzzy little town. I went and washed my hands with the cheapest, nastiest smelling hospital soap they had in their disgusting little bathroom. I attempted to dry my hands off under the world dryer. I swear to God, the air came out at a whopping half a mile per hour. I could have held my hands in front of my grandmother's snoring face and dried them off faster. I then went looking for her. Here she was, standing with a group of her girlfriends, trying to blend in I guess. I walked straight up and said, did you get your underwear all straightened out after your romp with Captain Minivan? The girls looked shocked and taken back by my audacity. They've probably never seen or heard a real man talk before, so they didn't know how to act. I'm pretty sure they all got instantly turned on though, based on the looks I was getting from them. Let's go, I commanded. She hesitated for about half a second, which was half a second too long for me. So I went on, okay, you're staying here then. I turned and started walking away. She yelled, stop, I'm coming. To which I replied, I am sure this is the first time you've truthfully said that tonight, but no, you can call an Uber. I kept walking towards the door and out to my car. One of her stupid friends came running out and was trying to get me to stop and talk to her. She was wearing a mini skirt and was probably that one girl who was known in school for nothing more than her body, and now she was at her class reunion trying to once again be known for that. Well, I'm not sure how that all worked for her back in high school, but I'm going to guess that after tonight she would forever be remembered as someone who was trying too hard, and who no longer had the backing needed to be that girl anymore. She kept asking me if I was okay and asking me if I wanted to talk. 
I just turned and looked at her to make sure she knew that I was in fact rejecting everything that she was inevitably offering. I looked her up and down. With no amount of pleasure on my face, I let out a little laugh and got into my car and drove off. I turned on some loud music to help drown out the lingering effects of that horrific band. I also sprayed myself down with some cologne to kill the smell of that awful soap. I headed back towards the city and back to my life. I took a hot shower and climbed into bed. I woke up the next morning and sent an email to my lawyer. He took care of the rest. I walked out and found my wife, asleep on the couch, still in her clothes from the night before. So I woke her up and told her to go get cleaned up. I made her some breakfast. In fact, I made her favorite breakfast. I think she thought it was some sort of amends and a sign that I wanted to patch things up. She sat there, trying not to smile, thinking she was totally going to get away with things. I smiled back as I watched her eat each bite. When she was done, she thanked me again and then started to apologize. I held my hand up, which made her totally stop speaking mid-sentence. Sitting there in silence, awaiting my words, she had a look on her face that screamed this vibe of I am totally off the hook and he still loves me. I leaned in towards her and spoke these words, I am a benevolent man, a patient man, a loving and caring man. I could see her relaxing and soaking in every syllable now, but I am not your bitch. Get out of my house and never come back. She instantly broke into tears and ran into the bedroom and quickly gathered her things and walked out the door. I went to my office and pulled up my dashboard and got to work. That's it. I hope you enjoy my story. I've got important shit to do. See ya. That was very. Well, what are the words I am looking for here? What do you guys think of this one? Let us know in the comments below. When you subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell. Click here for more Tangled Threats.